Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. As a nation, we are just potty about our pets. Lunchtime! We are unashamedly animal crackers, and I'm just the same. What do you think about that? <laughs> but you'll be amazed at the sometimes baffling lengths we go to for our pets. <laughs> oh, dirty. That was silly, wasn't it? The time. Oh, that's lovely. Yay! <laughs> the money. Oh. Not to mention the love. Oh, yes, that nice. So join me as I enter the extraordinary and often bizarre world of our pedigree pals. Uh -huh. This week, Charlie, a stressed and troubled dachshund, is about to find out if he can be helped by a trip to a dog yoga class. You can laugh all you want, but try it once and then see how you feel afterwards. Oh, goodness me. Breeder Sharon has everything riding on her next generation of show ponies. Fingers crossed we'll do well. She's looking good. And I struggle with my new rescue dog, Baz, who has a traumatic past and may face a rocky road to feeling better. No, he won't like no, that. No, he won't like that. I, even I wouldn't like that. <laughs> I've always loved having dogs. And for over 70 years now, I've had at least one at home. I'm what you'd call a traditional pet owner. But recently, I've discovered some rather bizarre pet trends afoot. Believe it or not, these are all poodles competing in a controversial new dog show for America. Now, wait for this. It's called Creative Grooming, and it's where dogs are given these bizarre makeovers. For some reason, it's a craze that's catching on here. As you'll see when we follow the two hottest contenders in the British competition. Oh, hi, Barney. First up is Poodle Barney in Bedfordshire. Boy. He's got no idea what he's just walked into. Top drawer groomer Tanya is about to give him the most ridiculous hairdo of his life. Creative grooming is basically creating art on the living <laughs> canvas that is a dog. If you say so. Does that feel really nice? Beauty of it is, it's short lived. If it goes wrong or if you don't like it, you can clip it off, the hair grows back, and you can start again. Day to day, Tanya just gets to do a rather boring wash, cut and blow dry on dogs. Entering the English Creative Groomer competition is the one chance she gets to show her real talent. I'm undecided whether it's going to be flat or three-dimensional, but... Tanya has been planning for the competition for months, and she's come up with a bonkers and frighteningly ambitious plan. The theme for this year, because everybody needs a theme, is Salvador Dali. Oh, you couldn't be more surreal. I'm a huge fan of his. A little bit of genius, a little bit of madness, a little bit of fun all thrown together, and I've never seen it done before. Dali's face on either shoulder. The floppy clock is going to be hugely 90 degree flat. Yeah. Um, and, and very, very much prominent, sitting proud of the hip and coming down that back leg. Yeah. I was a bit stupid doing this design. I, th I think you can do it. <laughs> Between you and me, I don't think Barney is much of a fine art buff. But Barney faces some stiff competition because he's up against Bella from Northamptonshire, owned by groomer Sue. So strong is Sue's desire to beat her rival, Tanya, that she's called in a ringer. Hello. <laughs> her friend, Laurie, who is a champion creative groomer from the States, and it looks like she's no stranger to hair dye. Hi, baby girl. What are you doing? 
So what outlandish and daringly difficult design awaits our Bella? It's going to be woodland and butterfly garden. Woodland and butterfly garden, okay. I'm still deciding whether I want the fairy or not. The fairy is actually the centerpiece of it. Your eye goes straight to the fairy. Yeah, but so. do you make it a fairy or do you make it a butterfly? A butterfly is a lot easier than a fairy. <laughs> it, it'll be a showstopper if we can pull it off. I don't think Bella's bothered whether it's a fairy or a butterfly. Last year, Sue stole the show when she transformed Bella into the Octopoodle. Sue's rival, Tanya, knows she and Barney will have to up their game if they stand any chance of winning. This is about as good as it gets. It was absolutely flawless. We want to do better. We do want it. to beat Sue. It is brilliant. Yeah. You like it, Amber? <laughs> Do you want to be an octopedal too? Yeah. It'll be tough. Looks like it's going to be scissors at dawn. <laughs> now, us Brits have always led the way when it comes to breeding thoroughbred horses. Keep going, thank you. But now the bar has just been raised. Or should I say lowered? because these adorable creatures are actually fully grown miniature horses. Come on, mate. Whoa. But as we're about to find out, breeding them is not a simple task. We are in Hampshire at the stud farm of Sharon and Derek. They turned to breeding miniature horses after Sharon's riding career was tragically cut short. I had a, a riding injury many years ago and I can't ride in competition anymore. So we found we could scale down the operation to these little, little people. Since then, she's devoted her life to their breeding and showing. They take up far less space, far less time every day. I mean... They don't cost as much. No, they don't cost near. as much to buy as a big horse. They don't cost as much to keep. Nowhere near as much. It's the breeding season, and today young stud DC is being brought out to mate with Maggie. <laughs> DC is an old hand at this. My goodness me, as you can see, he's already getting a little bit frisky. There's a good boy. When he does this, it's called uh -huh. Flemon. And he's, he's basically smelling her, and then he runs that smell over an, an organ called Jacobson's organ in the roof of his mouth, <laughs> and that smell will tell him whether or not she is actually properly in season. Maggie must be in season, otherwise she wouldn't put up with all of DC's hot-blooded commotion. Good girl. Good girl, Maggie. Hey, hey. Well done, Maggie. That's a good girl, Maggie. Good boy. You can't hurry, love. This is Maggie's first ever date, and DC needs to take things a little bit slower. You're not ready yet, you plonker. You're being a very good girl, Maggie, aren't mm -hmm. you? Is it worth persevering with? We'll try for a minute or two. Come on. Nature will take its course in good time if DC calms down. But if not, there are others warming up on the stud's bench. <laughs> if she's going to stay a successful breeder, Sharon's fortunes will rest on her younger horses. Horses like eight-month-old Ella, who's having her winter coat shaved off. Oh, as you can see, she's a bit of a little madam. She's a typical toddler. She's got the attention span of a gnat. <laughs> she'll do something for a minute, and then she'll change her mind. In a few days, Ella will have to be on her best behaviour, because she's being groomed for her first competition. But the young ones can be temperamental. The worst I've ever had happen with them is, is they'll throw a complete toddler tantrum, stand up and flip themselves over backwards, and then just lay there on the floor and throw the legs about and literally exactly like you'd see a toddler in the supermarket aisle I don't want to do this anymore mummy and um, I've had one or two do that in the past and it's very embarrassing well she's groomed and looking good for the show but will Ella behave and prove she has the potential to be a future star 
As a nation of animal lovers, it's dogs that steal our hearts the most, with almost a quarter of all families having one at home. My wife Anne and I are no exception. Since we've been married, which is nearly 50 years, we've had dogs all the time. All the time. We? All the time. At least one. Oh, at least one, sometimes yeah. two, but mainly one, yes. Yes. Well, they're lovely things to have, creatures to be with. They are the family. Oh, look. Daisy. And, and, and Ben. No, I think that's Buster. That Buster. Buster. They look so alike, don't they? Yeah, I mean, that is a divine picture. Oh, no, look at them. I mean, I mean it just... <laughs> These two darlings, they were... And we darling. called them Rag, Rags and Muffin. Rag and Muffin. Yes. And they were divine. And we lost one quite early. And the other one lived for a long time, but we lost Muffin about mm, five, six months ago, six months ago. I was heartbroken after we lost Muffin. It was a huge gap in our lives, and I was determined to replace him. I know we could manage puppies. <laughs> I'm 82, for heaven's sake. So I recently went to a centre for rescue dogs where we got a lovely crossbreed called Baz. Yeah. Come on, my darling. And here he is. Come and meet these people, my precious. Oh, yes. Now that's Ooh, no, he won't like that. No, he won't like no, that. No, he won't like that. I, even I wouldn't like that. <laughs> Come and here, precious. Come but here. Baz has a problem. He seems damaged. Nothing's known about Baz's past before he ended up at the rescue centre, but I have a horrible feeling he's been subjected to some truly horrid treatment. He's quite skittish. Very wary of me and prone to growling at strangers. I want to do all I can to make him feel more at ease and create a loving bond with me. Oh, he's very, very jumpy. Yeah. yeah. I've called in Candy, who's a dog behaviour expert, to see if she can help us understand him and bring him out of his shell. Ooh, oh, that? look at that. Oh, you like that sausage, don't you, darling? Is it sausage? It is, I'm afraid. Yes, darling. You've got to be a little bit careful about stroking him when he's growling because... Ah, that's interesting. He, you know, he's you doing a behaviour that you good. don't want to encourage. It's very normal for, for owners with new dogs if the dog shows a little bit of anxiety around visitors. But don't reassure him to the point where he's being rewarded for being fearful. Oh, ah, well, that's ah, interesting. Right. He'll keep on yes. doing Yes, he's going to be a fabulous dog. Yes. Uh, I just want him to accept people more easily. I really want Baz to become the same sort of happy companion my other dogs have been. But when Candy and I take him out into the garden, the problem is all too apparent. You want to call him? Where are... Here. Baz only feels safe when Anne is around. Where is your mummy? Well, I go and see if... Come on, see if we can find her. See if we can find her, come on. Where are you, Anne? Oh, God! Oh. He's so much happier when you're there, though. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a good thing to have the attachment to you, but you don't want to make it an over-attachment. No, so no, no. Pass on some of the, the well, care to, to well, Ronnie. I know that. Yes, sharing the care would be good. I, I'll do his food one day and you do his food the next. Yes. Know? Yes. And when people do come, if you if you have a lead on him, and then sometimes... Why, why is that? Just so that he's given a bit more guidance, because at the moment, if you let him just go up to people, it's the same to him. I, he's saying, I don't know what to do, I'm going to investigate. I might not like you, I might snap at you, I might growl at you, as he did today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He just needs you to, to on, be there and say, just sit next to me can and nothing bad will yes. happen. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. He's definitely a mummy's boy, isn't oh, he? Yes. See, see the difference yeah. in, his, in his reaction yeah. now? Yeah. He's smiling yeah. again, his tail's wagging. This is clearly just the start of a long, tough process to get Baz settled, but in the coming weeks, I'm determined to make him happy whatever it takes. <laughs> Meanwhile, we are back with Poodles, Barney and Bella as the creative groomers get started. It's Tanya's surreal Dali design versus Sue's fairy garden. So I'm aiming for a toadstool there. It's a sort of barking mad topiary for dogs. One slip and Dali's famous floppy clock could be gone for a burden. These three blobby looking things here are ants. 
Tanya began experimenting doing dog hairdos when she was just 15, so she well knows the perils of the job. We're often asked, what's the difference between being a dog groom and a hairdresser? You can't compare the two. I've yet to see a hairdresser who will happily groom a person who's moving around on the chair, um, poops, pees everywhere, and has had no problem passing wind in your face when you get to that end. <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> it's time to start adding some of the special non-toxic colouring. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, would you do this to yourself? Yep. Yeah, they do. It's going to take them each about 30 hours of painstaking grooming over several days before these exceptionally difficult designs will be ready. I mean, I can't help wondering what the dogs, Barney and Bella, feel about it all. A poodle needs grooming, so whilst you're doing normal grooming, you may as well do something a little bit different at the same time. She's just enjoying the fuss. There's so much time involved that you build up a special bond, and I think the majority of creative groomers would say their creative dogs have the best bonds with them. It's a stronger bond than even the show dogs we show owners. It's it's so intensive when you're doing this work. Well, it's anyone's guess who will come out best there. Now, two-thirds of owners say they give their pets the same care as their children. But some go to extraordinary lengths to make sure their pet is contented. <coughs> this is Charlie, a three-year-old dachshund who lives in London. Like my Baz, he's a rescue dog, and I'm afraid Charlie's got a problem. He's extremely anxious and stressed. He barks all the time, and his owner, Alexandra, can't bear to leave him on his own. I usually feel very guilty going to the gym and leaving him at home for an hour, knowing that he's been at home all day. Hello. Alexandra Hello. is determined for him to be happier. Obviously, I love him, but I love him as my brother, as my best friend. I want to help him with his problems, with his anxiety. Oh, he is a bit troubled, isn't he? Today, Alexandra is taking him somewhere where she hopes he'll find some peace. Now, wait for this. She's taking him to the latest extraordinary fab that's taking hold. It's doga, or dog yoga. I'm not making this up. I'm hoping that Doga will help Charlie relax. Uh, he is very, very unsettled. Yoga helps humans with overcoming such problems. I'm hoping it will help him. Running the yoga class today is Robbie, a two-year-old Bison toy breed. Use your ocean breath, deep breathing. With a little bit of help from his owner, Marnie. If you slow down your breathing and you, you hold your dog close to your chest, your dog can feel that. It, it just works. <sighs> I'm crazy, and you can call me barking mad, but the thing is that I'm absolutely convinced about what I'm doing. You can laugh all you want, but try it once, and then see how you feel afterwards. All the other dogs in the class are starting to get in the mood, but Charlie's still not feeling at ease. Lift through the heart centre, extend through the spine. Eggs only, <coughs> Oh, Charlie. <coughs> Charlie seemed to be very much there and uh, present in the class, and I could see quite a strong bond to his owner, and maybe potentially even a little bit too attached. And keep your eyes closed, and just curve up, imagine you're going to sleep. The other dogs are unable to find their inner peace, with Charlie so agitated. His yapping is ruining the mood. So as a last measure, Marley is forced to step in. Inhale. Oh, hello, we might be witnessing a miracle.
What I was so surprised was that Charlie allowed me to work with him. And he didn't flip, he didn't look at his mummy. So he allowed me to do a bit of massaging, a bit of work together. Charlie seems to settle down. Oh. It's nice to see Charlie looking more relaxed. There was a moment where he could really surrender and found his little yoga spot and he calmed down and it was without mummy and it was without me, he just found his own space and that will have a huge effect on his well-being. After months of fear fueled stress, Charlie seems to have finally found a moment of inner peace. It's still a lot of work, of course, but having those few moments, seeing him completely enjoying himself is fantastic, and I hope we will achieve much more of it. His entire life will be much, much calmer. It's great. Can't see Baz and me doing this, though. <laughs> I've never looked my best in a leotard. It's high noon in Hampshire for Ella, the temperamental mini-horse. And with so much at stake today, Sharon's even dusted down her lucky Texan cowgirl outfit. I am actually feeling quite nervous this morning, but fingers crossed we'll do well. She's looking good. This is the biggest small hall show this side of Basingstoke. It's Ella's first competition and Sharon's first chance to see what the future holds for her next generation of horses. I'm very competitive. I go in there wanting to win. But success today all rests on Ella's little shoulders. No, it's very exciting. Although it looks like she's about to throw her toys out of the pram. It's very exciting, are you? This is not a good time to misbehave as Sharon leads Ella round the ring. She's actually settled down much more now she's come in here. But uh, fingers crossed we'll see. She's still leaning on me a lot for comfort, but we'll get there. Diane, who's been judging for over nine years, is watching every move. What we're looking for in the miniature horse is that it's true to its type. Um, it is nicely put together, the, the length of neck to the body, and that it's uh, moving correctly. So far, so good. How old exactly? She's eight months. She's keeping it together. Ella is actually very free in her walk and trot, which for a young one is very, very nice. And that's probably going to be a big asset for her. Good girl. It's so lovely to see how well this little horse is behaving. Drop for me. But the final judgment is down to Diane. OK, thank you. She's made up her mind. Here comes the winner's rosette. Come on, Ella. Wait, no, the winner is a little star. Slightly more mature horse owned by Carol. Oh, oh you're gonna love this. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna go straight in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Oh, well. So who's getting second? Well done. Hello. Oh, thank you. you. did very well. The runner-up prize is going to Ella. You're very well behaved. <laughs> yeah. Can you listen to that and remember that comment? Looks here. like the future's bright for these two. That's a clever girl. Yes, you are. Absolutely over the moon with her. I really, really am. I think Sharon and little Ella will be walking tall back to the paddock today. It's the day of the totally bonkers creative grooming competition. And Barney the Poodle's in first with Tanya, but he's keeping his design under wraps. But my goodness, Sue's already in the hall, and just look what's happened to Bella. Bella, she thinks this is great fun. She's loving the attention. She's got more and more perked up as the colour's been going on. Her arch rival Tanya's design on Barney is finally unveiled. Hopefully, Barney's feeling fab. Pretty chilled out. You don't care, do you, dude? You just don't care. <laughs> it's taken weeks of preparation to get this far, but now it's crunch time. 
Right, so guys, you've got an hour and a half to complete your trim before the judging commences. You may start now. Good luck, everybody. The pressure is on to do the last minute bit of titivating and sprucing up. Oh, it's all very intense, isn't it? They're all being judged on creativity and how intricate their scissor work is. I'm going to beat Tanya today. No, I have no idea. It looks like I'm in for a good challenge this year. In your dreams. I'm being polite. <laughs> I do have to concentrate because I've only got 25 minutes left to go. <laughs> and that's really not enough. All the while, they're being closely scrutinised by Hannah, the judge who's had 20 years' experience of grooming dogs herself. I am actually looking at how the groomer is handling the dog and how they behave and everything. I mean, these dogs here were absolutely superb. The clock is ticking. Do we know how much time's left? Not much. OK, guys, you have 15 minutes to finish your dogs. In the closing moments, Tanya has a disaster. Dali's face is looking a bit more surreal than I think she intended. Because Barney moved when we were spraying the, the, the stencil on. Um, basically, it went everywhere but where it was supposed to, so I didn't have a clear Dali face, so I'm not doing the other side. Oh dear, time's run out on the floppy clock for Tanya. Done. Put your scissors down. <laughs> now it's all done and dusted, I could just sit here and cry my eyes out. Oh, I wish I'd finished. There's so much still to do, but I could just cry. It's not as transformational as my normal work, but I'm pleased with what I've done. It's almost time for the final judgment and the groomers pull out all the stops to gain an edge on their rivals, even transforming themselves. This one's come as a wizard, I think. I've had to really take everything on board, and um, my decision wasn't made until the very end, but I have chosen my winner, and it's very, very close. So is the winner Candy, the Maltese Terrier with the Wizard of Oz design? Or is it Bella's Fairy Garden from Sue in her party wig? Or will it be Barney with Tanya's Dali design? And the winner is Bella and Sue. So Sue becomes the English creative grooming stylist 2013. Can I touch it? But who will be in second place? It's Candy and the Wizard. And Tanya and Barney come third. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Just very, very ambitious. I oh, know, a bit too ambitious. I won, um, which I'm very happy about. So, but I don't, never speak much afterwards. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back. <laughs> Perhaps I should say that no animals were harmed during the making of this programme, although those poodles there might have lost their dignity just a little bit. Well, for now, it's good night from me.